Hey guys, Mix here, and in today's video we are back working on the half scout NASCAR with its new engine out of a 1980 Honda CB750C. And in the last video, you guys saw that we got this thing to actually run. Not fire like how I did when it was in the motorcycle after the rebuild, and I wanted to see if it'll run. It didn't just fire up. I was revving this thing, it was running, and it was running great. <laughs> So now that we know that this will run and everything like that, I did go ahead and order the rebuild kit that I was telling you guys about to try and save these carburetors because a whole new set and even a used set is extremely expensive and I want to try and reuse these while I have the chance. I mean, I already went through the headache of, you know, unfreezing all of the uh, linkages and everything like the throttle and the choke and everything like that. And once it was running with these, it was running pretty smooth. So. I think we might be able to save them. But in today's video, I want to get all of this wiring all organized, mounted up, everything like that. Um, you know, obviously get, get rid of the headlight, which is huge. And basically just everything that we don't need anymore, remove and clean up the huge mess. And along with that, we are going to be doing the long-awaited gearing for this, which might be a challenge, but I'm up for it. So the package that we were waiting on that I was telling you guys about in the last video was this one, and it finally came, and I already went ahead and opened it just to make sure that it was right, and it is, which is awesome. And then we also have this package, which I have not opened yet, so Let's hop straight into today's video and uh, unbox this real quick and I'll tell you guys exactly what my plan is for this and then we'll make it reality. Alright, so first off we'll do uh, the package that I've been waiting on for a while. I ordered two of these by accident, I only need one because I wasn't sure really exactly how I was going to do it, but now I know and I only need one, but these are pillow blocks with a one inch bearing inside. Oh yeah. So these are super, super nice. I mean, they have like little tensioners inside the bearing if you really need to make it tight. A uh, little grease fitting to fill it up. I'm pretty sure it is already full, but you know, when you need to refill it. And this pillow box use will make sense once I show you guys the next couple things I got. Also, while I'm recording this video, if you guys see like black lines going across the screen every now and then, something's acting up with the camera. I think it's when I weld. I might have messed up the camera, so. Oh, excuse that if it does happen. Oh yeah. So in this box, we have our sprockets and new chain. So I went ahead and just did the OEM gearing with this, just because I don't really want to tinker that much with the high and lows and everything like that. I'm sure on the NASCAR, it's going to be perfectly fine how it was OEM. But here is a uh, closer look at the front sprocket, and then the sprocket that's going to be going on the axle, which I might need to uh, mod this up a little bit to make it work. And I also ordered the OEM chain size and everything, so we're definitely not going to be a need to use all of it, but it is good to have extra just in case I do make a couple mistakes. Finally, over here, we have our thick one inch rod. And this is basically what the drive sprocket is going to be mounted on. This is going to be going, well, I'll just show you. It's going to be going where the sprocket goes usually on the motorcycle and basically I'm going to level this off to as level as possible like seriously I'm going to take my time with this and get it as level as I can and then weld it directly straight onto here and the pillow block is going to mount onto the frame it's going to go through the bearing and it's going to be nice and straight and with that the sprockets can be onto here as well nice and straight and I plan to put the dry sprocket exactly where this is I might need to like somehow make this into a split sprocket or I can try and figure out a way to like slide out the axle and slide this one in and try and fit it into there so I'll just try my best with that so it's definitely going to take a lot of fabricating to really make this work but like I said before I'm so down for this challenge do I know if it's going to work no not at all I'm kind of just going off my imagination but it seems like a logical plan in order to get the power down to the wheels. So guys, with that being said, I do want to begin off by getting all of this wiring where I want it and all mounted up. So let's begin with that right now.
guys, I am finally just about done uh, with routing the wiring harness. Now, it's not 100% yet because obviously I'm going to be running these into the cab. Uh, but once I figure out my exhaust system, um, I need to find a safe place to drill into here or, to, you know, cut into here so we can run the rest of the wires through. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to need to extend some of the wires like I had to do with the coils. Because the plug that the coils plug into is all the way down there, but hopefully this works. It is the right size wire and everything, so that is good to go as well. But I am going to keep the battery in the same place that it was with the old engine. So I need to get some thicker wire. I, I can't use like this thickness on that. It'll just probably just burn. But once I get the right thickness of wire, I'm going to run it all the way to the battery and then actually use the same ground that the old battery had on the NASCAR. So that should work perfectly fine. That over here still kind of looks like a mess, but once I uh, weld this bar across, I can kind of like brace it to this and everything. And I am gonna be using bolts for this as well. I just mocked it up with some zip ties because I can't find any bolts that I have uh, that are long enough to go through the frame and the stator. That all of this is all good to go as well, all bolted up. So I'm pretty happy how everything is right now. Still might look a little bit messy, but it'll definitely clean up way better once we get some more stuff done. But just to ensure that I didn't leave anything out and to see if we have spark with my extended wiring, I just wanna hook up the battery back here quick and just to double check that we have life. All right, so the battery is on. Uh, so now I'm gonna turn on the key and I don't have any more like lights or anything. I am going to be hooking up. I figured I'd let you guys know this if you don't know already, but I will be hooking up everything on here once this thing is pretty much done, I'm going to be making a custom dash. It's going to be sick. Have switches, working meters, and everything like that. So that's just going to have to hold off for now. But once the time comes, it's going to be insanely awesome. But the key is on. I'm just going to tap the start button and see what happens. All right, so I just tried it, and it just clicked. I don't think my ground is that good at all. I just stuck it between there. So uh, I'm going to try and find another place to put this and try again. I just put it where I had it last time when we went to start this and it was working fine so let's try this again i really hope that there isn't an issue oh yeah all right so now that we know that we have life i'm gonna take out the spark plug hook it up to the coil and see if there's spark ground it to the engine kill switch is in the run position yep we got spark on camera, it looks like it was only showing like every other spark, which is weird, but it was sparking pretty much the whole entire time. So now I'm just gonna try the other coil real quick. So cylinders one and four are on the same coil. Now I'm just gonna do two, just to make sure that both coils are in fact functioning. Yep, we have spark. Sweet. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna be ending off working, not the video, just working for today right here. Since I want to make the, uh, the little rod for the sprocket as level as possible, and I got a little level right here. You guys know that the only thing that I have that can cut metal is this, and obviously, cutting it by hand, I could make it level, but there's a good chance that it's really just going to be a huge headache. So I'm going to make a couple phone calls and uh, see if I can borrow anybody's, like, one of those, like, circular saws or whatever, that, but that can cut metal, because those go nice and straight through, and it'll definitely save a lot of time just instead of going back and forth trying to cut it by hand uh, with like the, the handsaw or whatever it's called. So with that being said, I will catch you all tomorrow. Alrighty guys, so it is the next day and unfortunately I wasn't able to uh, get a one of those circular saws or whatever they're called uh, to cut through the metal. So I'm just going to go ahead and just give it my all. I'm going to put a fresh blade on this and I'm going to try my best and even it out you know, using the level and try and get it to my best ability. I think I could really get it if I go back and forth. You know, I might not even cut it. I might just kind of kind of ease into it because as of right now, it is not really level. It's close, but not really. Like, that side goes up just a little bit more, so I might be able to just kind of put the, the blade towards it and smooth it in and out and then check it with the level. I feel like I just said level like 10 times, but let's just give this a shot. Alright, so basically I just used the uh, top of this as somewhat of like a, a sanding bit, which I'm sure is the complete wrong way to use this, but it did work fairly well and uh, it is centered pretty much perfectly, which I'm really, really happy about. So with that being said, 
I can go ahead and pull off the sprocket bolt, measure how much I need in order to, you know, thoroughly go past the pillow block. Not too much though, that's gonna come out the other side a ton. And then I gotta try and cut through this thick uh, one inch tube. And then once I'm done with that, I might need to like throw this into the freezer in order to get it to shrink. So then once it shrinks, I can put it into the, the bearing really quick and I might heat up the bearing just a little bit. And then once it all gets to like the same temperature, this will expand and it will nice be like super, super nicely inside of the pillow block and bearing. So let's get started with that. Right now. So right now I have kind of everything how I want it. Um, everything isn't finalized. <laughs> Obviously I'm not going to be keeping zip ties here or anything. I need to get bolts for that. You know, I, and I need bolts for the stator and everything. So I just got to go on a bolt run. But this is basically how it's going to be. I didn't finalize uh, welding everything up over here. I still need to do, you know, around the other side and a couple other places. But I did add uh, this little flat bar here just to help uh, make it, you know, flat to the mating surface and make sure that this thing will be spinning uh, nice and smooth. But it is currently uh, pretty late out here and drilling and welding is kind of loud. I don't want to annoy my neighbors or anything like that. So I'm going to catch you guys back once again tomorrow when we will finish this thing up. So I will see you guys then. The next day. Alrighty guys, so it is the next day once again and today is a scorcher. I got the AC blasting right now hoping that it will just keep it cool. Right now it is currently hotter here than in Death Valley, so it's kind of like a sauna in here right now, so I kind of want to just crank this out right now, try and figure out a way to get on this rear sprocket. So what I'm going to do first is put this thing up, jack it up a little bit, and then uh, take off the wheels and see if I could just loosen the axle, slide it forward, then I can try and see if I can slide the sprocket in and bolt it onto the split sprocket mounting bracket, so let's give that a shot. So I just finished up loosening up the axle and I didn't quite think this through enough. The center hole on the sprocket is not going to be able to fit around this little uh, like bearing housing. Unless I pull the axle through the bearing housing and then kind of get it back in. But it seems like the bearing is like really, really on this axle. Right now I'm kind of... What the heck is that? Holy cow, there is a huge bug in here. Oh my god, it is up there somewhere. Uh, but, but anyways, I have another idea in my head, like that can make like so I have a couple options here. I can pull the axle through the bearing, which might be kind of difficult. God, I hear that bug. It is huge. Or I could try and make this my own split sprocket and cut it basically right down the center, and. Uh, try and get it to my best abilities to match it up and basically mount it on there 
in a split sprocket way. So those are my two possibilities. At first I was going to do that, but then I thought of this idea which isn't working, so I might have to do this. But I'm going to bring it to you guys. It is dangerously hot in here. Like, I don't know if you guys could tell. I don't know, but I am hot. The AC, I mean, I think I might need to insulate the roof or something to really keep it, like, in here, so... I gotta figure this out. It is the hottest day of the year right now. I don't, and I don't want to pass out in here from heat exhaustion. I can't even speak heat exhaustion or whatever. But I'm gonna bring it to you guys. I was really hoping to have the gearing completely done in this video, but I really don't want to mess this up. And I know a lot of you guys are informed in all of this and come up with some good ideas. So I'm gonna be ending off the video here. Um, next video, we should be finishing this up. We will be finishing this up, rebuilding the carbs, uh, doing the headers, the final engine mounts. And then, oh yeah, shift linkage, clutch pedal. We still got a ways to go, but it's just minor things that require a lot of detail just so we don't mess this up. But anyway, follow my social medias. They will be in the address of this video. Instagram, Snapchat, I use the most. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, tell your friends about the channel.